Hi, this is a lecture for topic 4.2D um, on plastics. So just, uh, you can watch this video. This is a, it's a brief history of plastics and how they changed our world. It's, it's pretty short and it is um, it gives you a good idea of, of when plastics were invented and how they've been used. And also some of the problems associated with them. So in the most basic, plastics are something called a polymer, right? And um, there are natural polymers and there are... Uh, man-made polymers, but um, plastics are a type of polymer, and polymers are very uh, large and usually very long molecules that are composed of base units called monomers. So poly means many, and mer means molecules, so it's many molecules, and a monomer is going to be uh, a shorter molecule. Um, and so, you know, as you can see in some of these diagrams here, that you can see that there are sort of repeating units within the... Um, within the plastic, and same, same here. So that, that's what plastics really are, are polymers. And, and the, one of the great things about plastic is that plastic is, uh, it has several really key advantages. It's light, it is strong, it is resistant to biological activity. So in other words, um, it can't be broken down by bacteria, which is a good thing. Um, when you think about the fact that um, you can store things for much longer in a plastic container than you would say in you know, a wood container or a paper container or something like that. So plastics have a, an advantage. They're light, so it's a lot cheaper to transport something that's uh, in a plastic bottle than it is in something that is in a glass bottle or in a metal can. So that's why plastics are, are so prevalent in our lives today is because they're light, they're strong, and they don't um, react with bacteria very well. But that's also the problem with them is because they're light and strong, they're used very, very frequently. They're um, usually meant for single use. So there's quite a lot of single use plastics that we have out there. And so we throw things away as soon as we're done with them. Um, they don't break down. So all the plastic that has ever been produced is still with us. You know, it takes four or 500 years for this stuff to break down. So if you think about it, every piece of plastic that has ever been produced is still here on Earth with, with us. And generally what happens is because of, you know, sort of erosive activity, you know, from the sun or from uh, wave action and things like that, they get broken into tiny little pieces, which are called microplastics. And those microplastics um, have a... Uh, a you know pretty serious impact on for instance marine organisms and, and just they're very prevalent so plastic is a bit of a, a mixed blessing it's very nice for storing things in it's very nice for transporting but it also has a huge environmental impact which we are just beginning to uh, deal with all right so plastics uh, usually they're formed from hy hydrocarbons such as ethylene and uh, propylene and so ethylene and propylene are obtained from crude oil Right, and you can see in this chart that um, you know of the crude oil that's produced in the world, most of that's going towards heating oil. It's going into um, you know petrol. It's going into raw materials for chemicals like fertilizers and things like that. Also use um, crude oil, um, and so and about four percent is going to uh, plastic use. Okay, so there is the um, you know some idea of where. Uh, the crude oil that's produced and how much how much of that goes into plastic manufacture. Okay, so there's a couple types of plastics that you need to know. One of them is a thermoplastic. So thermo means heat. Plastic actually means something that can be um, bent and reformed. So um, a thermoplastic is a type of plastic that can be heated and formed into new shapes repeatedly. And you know, if you think of your 3D printers, that's exactly what we're using. We're using a thermoplastic. We're melting the plastic and we're reforming it into something new. And you could do that. Like you could remelt your, you know, let's say you have a failed 3D print. If we had the, the actual um, products to do this, you could take some of that thermoplastic and you could, you could actually... Uh, re-extrude uh, it as a filament and, and just reuse it. So it, uh, that's possible with the thermoplastics. Uh, thermoplastics have a linear chain uh, with weak secondary bonds between the chains. So essentially they're sort of like parallel, like a, almost think of your hair, right? So if you can think of your hair being like thermoplastic, it's kind of like a mat almost of, of these polymer chains, okay? Um, some general characteristics, they're ductile, that means they can be pulled into uh, a wire. 
uh, or extruded. Low stiffness, so if you think of a, like a squishy water bottle, that's a good example. They can be injected into a mold and they can be reshaped after heating and they're easy and cost effective to manufacture. So this is a, an, you know, just a graphic that shows you kind of this idea of a thermoplastic. Uh, because there's not bonds between these, these uh, polymer chains, it's easier to melt them. So you can heat them and melt them. And so you can then reform them. All right, here's some different types. We've got polypropylene, and you can read about what we use this for. Um, but, you know, lots of food containers, coat hangers, furniture, plastic chairs, those kinds of things are made out of uh, polypropylene. We have polyethylene, okay, uh, you can look at the, um, the uses for that, but you know, water bottles, food storage containers, plastic tubing, light work surfaces, shampoo bottles, uh, flower pots, things like that. PET, or PET, which is polyethylene um, terephthalate, I probably said that wrong. Um, we use these things for like soda and water bottles, clamshell food containers, fibers for polyester, um, and parts made for injection molding. ABS, we actually can use this for um, uh, 3D printing. That's it's one of the types of filaments that we have. Um, but you can imagine that, you know, a telephone handset, um, Lego is actually made out of, of ABS. So it's, it's quite a, a tough material. It's got a high impact resistance, high toughness, dimensional stability, good stiffness. So it's, it's quite a, a nice plastic, but again, with the idea that plastics do have their problems. Hips or high impact polystyrene. So you can uh, see what this is used for, but you know, it, it's used for toys. Um, it's used for kitchen utensils, shelves, things like that. And PVC. PVC is polyvinyl chloride. And actually this is used for piping a lot. So if you think of the sort of plastic pipes that um, bring water into your house, that's usually made with, with PVC. Uh, it's also um, can be used for lots and lots of different things. So it's it's you know it's everywhere. So um, that's these are the types of thermal plastics that you should know about. All right, that brings us to thermal setting plastics. So this is a type of plastic that uh, is once formed into shape cannot be reformed into a different shape. And this is because the the thermal setting plastics have our linear chain molecules with strong primary bonds between the chains. So in other words, they're, they're connecting across the chains. And I'll show you a graphic of that in a second. They've got, they're really stiff, so they have high stiffness, they have high strength, and um, they cannot be reheated or remolded. They will usually char or burn. So this is kind of the example of what we're talking about with the thermal setting plastic. It's got these, these bonds which go across the polymer chains. And so when you heat them, they basically degrade because those bonds are quite strong. So this is what gives them their high stiffness, but also which makes them, it's very difficult to recycle them. And it's also very difficult to uh, reform them once they're formed. So let's look at some types. We've got polyurethane. Okay, and so polyurethane is, you know, wheels, wing parts, sponges, lacquers, um, toys. These are all made with uh, polyurethane. And you can read through some of the, um, some of the uh, uh, properties right here. Okay, urea formaldehyde. Again, read through the, the things here. Um, but this is also, these things are often used in things like MDF and particle board, insulation, um, shrink resistant textiles, things like that. Uh, melamine, melamine resin. So this has got a really high hardness. And actually, if you think of the, um, if you think of the, Plates that we use in the in the uh, school in the cafeteria, those are made out of melamine. Those plastic white plates that are quite hard are made with melamine. And then we have epoxy re uh, resin. So epoxy um, has you know we use this in the design hub quite a bit. If you remember back to the um, uh, advocate unit, we we use epoxy resin to color in our our uh, symbols that we created for our causes. Okay. Now, when we're recovering and disposing of plastics, basically this idea is that, you know, actually most plastics can be recycled. Um, and it just depends on the economic, technical, and logistical factors. Like, is it economically viable to, to recycle them? Is it, you know, what are the technical challenges and what other logistics um, go into this? 
thermoplastics are much more easily recycled, so that the thermoplastics are the ones that are, are most easily recycled. There's a range of chemical compounds, and therefore you need to sort, the, sort them for recycling. And this is a huge problem with recycling, is that you know not all plastics are the same, so you can't just dump them all into the same thing. You have to actually sort them. Thermal sets are not easy, and they're also very expensive to recycle. Um, most thing, you know, the basically you're not going to recycle thermoset plastics. So thermo thermoplastics, um, you need to basically grind them into a powder, and then this adds time and cost. You know, most times this just stuff gets sent to the landfill. I think it's only one fifth of plastic products that actually get recycled. Um, and some plastics are not accepted at recycling plants because of chemical compounds and phys uh, facility capabilities and things like, you know, if you don't rinse out your plastic you know, food bottles, they can't be recycled, right, because they're dirty, um, and that, that, that interrupts the recycling um, process. All right, here is a plastic and resin identif identification code, so this will show you which type of, of plastics, um, and, and, you know, there are, and, and if, you know, when they're separating these. Okay, so that's a little bit about plastic. Thanks for watching. See you next time.